Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. So we are finally getting into some nice weather here in Colorado. Digging through my stash this morning looking to see what kind of bras I wanted to make and I found this daisy lace and I believe I purchased this from the tailor-made shop last year and it just seemed like it screamed spring to me. So I want to go ahead and make a bra with this. I just like the simplicity of it of just those white flowers on a sheer background with the the small amounts of yellow in there. So what I'm going to do today is a mono wire bra. So the pattern that I'm using is one that I drafted myself. I drafted it quite a while ago, so I'm not gonna go through the entire process of putting it together, but I can give you just a really quick rundown. So here is the frame of my bra here. And what I've done to create this is I took, you know, the bridge and um, the outer cradle from a pattern that I already know fits me well and that I love. And so I copied over that bottom curvature from this pattern. So I had that into place. So I used that curvature. But then for the cradle itself, I used my mono wire. So I placed my mono wire onto there and sort of copied over that arc onto here. And I made sure to build in about five millimeters of wire spring here on the outer edges. I find personally that wires feel more comfortable to me if they have a little bit of spring in there. Um, now this wire is not completely flat. So when I lay it down, there is a little bit of gap right here in the center where it doesn't exactly touch the, the table. Uh, and that's good because it's gonna give you that sort of like torque that goes around your body. But I find that when you do the wire splay with that, you get a little bit more of that torque and it helps to curve around the body just a little bit better. So that's how I've done the inner edge and the bottom edge of my frame piece. And because I've used a pattern that I already know works well, it also means that I can go ahead and use my back band piece from this pattern because I've just transferred over those same distances. So I can go ahead and use my pattern piece here interchangeably. So there's my back band, my side cradle, and my bridge. And then lastly, I had to work on the cups. So for this design, I have gone with what I'm calling like a keyhole cup. So there is going to be some skin showing here just in the center front. And I wanted to go with a darted cup piece because this lace, I don't want to interrupt it very much. I just want like one solid piece that goes across there. So what I've used for the base of this is of course my darted cup piece. The only real difference is that I needed to add some extra material just in the center front that sort of takes up that space where the bridge would normally be. So if I, you can see how on this cup, you have all this extra area on the bridge here that's no longer going to exist in the mono wire cup. So I, I decided that, so basically I just cut off this piece from the bridge here and attached it onto my cut piece so that I still had material in the same spots, if that makes sense at all. So, and then once I did that, I did sew this up a couple of times, tried it on myself and made minor alterations and tweaks until I got something that I thought looked really good. And so I just sewed up a single cup, slided it onto the wire and then held it up to my body to see how like the volume was looking or and how, where things were hitting to make sure I liked how it looks. So that's the pattern all done and dusted. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut out all of my fabric pieces. So everything has now been cut out. Um, I made some choices when it came to the actual lace itself. I didn't cut out the full pattern piece in the lace just because I wanted to make sure I got a lot of daisies on there. Um, if I had shimmied it down so that I could fit the pull full pattern piece on the lace and like I just would have had daisies at the tippy tippy top but I am going to back it in some sheer cup lining so I think that's fine because this is going to be what takes the weight anyway so if I so if I put these on top here I think it's okay that it doesn't extend all the way to the end of that strap extension on either side because I can sort of it's been reinforced with the more sturdier material so I have my cut pieces cut out of both lace and sheer cup lining. Like that. 
and then I decided to cut the frame out of a single layer of sheer cup lining because I want something that feels very light and ethereal and then just my back band pieces out of white power net. So I'm gonna go ahead and start assembling everything. Um, for the band, it's really, really simple. You know, just doing straight line stitches at these two sections here and straight lines attaching the back band piece. So you have one long continuous band. So I'm gonna do that off screen. So, and for the cups, I don't love having raw seams touching that sensitive bit of my anatomy. Um, I find it can be a little bit itchy and irritating. So I'm going to compose, so I'm gonna go ahead and sew these up separately. So I'm going to sew the lining, sew the dart into the lining with the seam allowances facing to the inside and a dart into the cup where the seam allowances face towards the body. And then when I sandwich them together on top of each other, all those seam allowances are encased inside. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that for both the cups and my band. So the band is done as well as doing all of the darts into the cups. Of course, I, went, I made sure that I stitched past the actual dart line itself. And then when I got to the end, I left it with a long tail, tied it, tied the threads two or three times and then snipped it off. So for combining the cups, I have seen some people like press these open and then stitch down the center. Um, my preference, I think it's just a little bit easier for me, is I'll make the seam allowance on like the bottom go one direction and then the seam allowance on the top layer goes the other direction and then I seam down the middle. I mean, it's the same thickness, um, but then I don't have to worry about pressing stuff open. So in this case, I'm gonna just ensure that the seam allowance on my lining goes towards the center front and then the seam allowance on my cup pieces goes to the side cradle. And then I'm gonna lay these on top of each other lining up that dart and then pinning down the center. So it gets a little fiddly, but I guess technically you don't have to sew them together. I just think that it helps to keep stuff in place a little bit better. And then luckily this is see-through material, so that of course makes it a little bit easier. Now I'm gonna take this to my machine. Um, let's see, I'm gonna use, I'm probably gonna use a zigzag stitch just because it, it lays a little bit flatter, but zigzag down that center seam are or in between those two darts just to get it, everything laying flat and then I can ha then I'll have my my fully assembled cut piece. And so here's what it looks like once that's been done. Um, I think it really cleans up everything and the inside now is nice and smooth. The first time I made a bra using this pattern, um, I decided to just dart both at the same time, like laid on top of each other, which meant I had seam allowances on the inside and then I just couldn't wear the bra at all because it was way too itchy. So I'm hoping, so I'm hoping that this solves that problem. I'm feeling it now, I think it should be fine. There doesn't seem to be any, any worse than any other seamed bra. <clears throat> so before I can put my cups into my frame, I'm gonna to have to finish some edges. So I'm gonna finish this neckline edge up here, as well as this keyhole edge with some white foldover elastic. I think white foldover elastic is the best thing to use for curves like this because you can stretch it while you're sewing it and it, it sort of like contours, a lot like bias binding or something like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish those edges. So now those are finished. I'm really loving how this is gonna look. I'm gonna tie this together with just a single ring in the center front here. Um, I've left these intentionally long because I wanna be able to adjust this so I can, I can pull it back all the way to this meeting point if I need to get it closer together, but I have some flexibility. So that's why I left it long like that. And then I made sure to do my bottom, this elastic first so that this one can sort of like um, 
cover the top edge and continue that line in one continuous sweep motion. So now I'm gonna go ahead and place these into my frame here. Because they don't meet in the center front, I'm gonna start at my underarm edge, which I don't normally do. Normally I start at the bridge, but I'm gonna start at my underarm edge here and pin along to the center front here. And then I should have about half of an inch showing just in the middle. So here it is with the cups inserted into the frame. This section right here still has that raw edge, like I said. Um, I did sew across it just to give myself a little bit of guide. The raw edge will be covered up by the underwire channeling, so I'm not really concerned about it. So now that that's done, I'm really liking how this looks. I think that looks really sporty. I know from the past when I did that, um, I tend to pull away a little bit here. So I'm gonna wait to put my ring in until after I can try the bra on and know exactly how far or close I need to make these. So the next step I'm going to do is the underwire channeling. So for the underwire channeling, you just do it like you normally would, um, applying it on the cup side and then folding it towards the band. The only difference being is you're gonna do one continuous long piece here. So now the underwire channeling is in and it gives you a really nice clean folded edge up at the top there. So now I'm gonna go ahead and do my bottom band elastic, my upper band elastic, and my straps. All of this is exactly the same as it is in any other bra. So I'm not really gonna show you much about that but i will go ahead and pause and pick up the camera again right when it comes time to put the wire into the channeling here i find personally that that is the hardest part of doing a mono wire bra it's tricky to have it navigate these contours because it's such a rigid piece and it has to go all the way through the full length so i will show you when putting that in just so you can feel a little bit better if you're having trouble um, it also will help even out some of these wrinkles that you're seeing here because Obviously it's designed with that wire shape in mind. So when I come back, we'll put in the wire, but I should have a lot more done on the bra. And now comes time for the struggle. So I've put the bottom band in. I should mention that I designed my pattern so that the bottom band fit in just exactly underneath the wire here. But if you're having to overlap, I would do the bottom band before the underwire channeling gets top stitched down, just to be aware. So I've done the bottom band. I've done the first pass of the upper band elastic, so I can go ahead and slide it in, and then when I do my second pass, it sort of like cleans up the underwire channeling edge there. So first I need to make sure that the wire is oriented the correct way. So if I lay it flat on the table, I can see that the center is sticking out here. That's correct, that's how I want it in. I don't wanna put it in like this because my that's not how my body is shaped. My body is more rounded outward in the center front. So I wanna make sure I have this going the right way in and then start shoving it in. And now's the hard part. <laughs> Okay, wire is in um, and it's looking really good. Quite excited for how this is turning out. Like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and do that second pass of my upper band elastic and straps and hook and eyes. And then here we have the finished bra. Really happy with how this guy turned out. It turned out that I really didn't need much of that extension there in the center front. Um, so I think I need to alter my pattern just a little bit to, to bring that closer together. So. Yeah, that's how it looks. I'm really happy how this turned out. So this is the Monowara bra, and then I was kind of sneaky while I was working on this. I also made a second version, just in a more traditional style. So same lace and everything, but this is like my vertical seamed self-draft pattern. I think it started as a black beauty, but it really doesn't look like that anymore. So you can see like the difference between the more traditional style and the sportier monowire. So I hope you guys have enjoyed watching as I put together this bra and I'll see everyone next time. Take care. Mm -hmm.